And joining me now is the Armed Forces Minister, James Heapy. Good morning to you from uh, Kiev. And it seems uh, that the Ukrainians are still holding out, still defending this city against Putin's military. They are putting up quite a fight. They, they certainly are. In fact, we in the MOD don't recognise um, Dominic's report that Melitopol has fallen to the Russians. Um, as far as we're concerned, all of... Russia's main day one objectives of Kharkiv, Kherson, Chernihiv, Moropol, Sumy and Melitopol are still in Ukrainian hands. And what you're seeing in Kiev at the moment are very isolated pockets of Russian special forces and paratroopers. The main armoured columns approaching Kiev are still some way off. And that is a testament to the incredible resistance that the Ukrainian armed forces have put up over the last 48 hours or so. Yeah, I mean, that would seem to be right as regards Kiev. Certainly the fighting we're hearing is on the outskirts of the city, some small arms fighting uh, more centrally. But um, the fear has to be, uh, given it is this massive Russian army, that a much bigger, more dangerous assault on this city is about to occur in the coming hours and days. Well, I think that's right. Um, clearly, the Russian uh, plan is to take Kyiv. Uh, but the reality is, is that the Ukrainians are thwarting them thus far. And that is an incredible effort on their part. And that brings into play all sorts of challenges for Russia. Uh, they will need to start to consider how they will resupply the troops that have taken longer to get down to Kyiv than they thought. Uh, they will need to resupply those who have been engaged in very fierce combat uh, all around other Ukrainian cities. So there's a, there's, a, there's a challenge for the Kremlin that I'm not sure that we think they necessarily thought they would have to uh, work their way through. Uh, and that is potentially an opportunity for the Ukrainians to... Um, to fight back even more. We'll see what, what, uh, what happens. Look, it's a, it's a very grave situation, but um, from our perspective here in the MOD, from what we're picking up from the Ukrainians, from what we're seeing um, through the various uh, ways that we see things, uh, it looks like uh, the Russian plan is nowhere near running to schedule. Uh, and I think that will be a great cause for concern for President Putin and uh, rather points to the fact that there was an awful lot of hubris in the Russian plan and that he may well be awfully advised. Well, I mean, the bottom line is he has a very powerful military and he could turn the awesome power of that military on this city uh, any time he wants. I mean, are you still trying to get arms in to um, the help the Ukrainian forces? We are very much trying to get lethal aid to the Ukrainians. Uh, the UK uh, convened a donor conference yesterday evening, chaired by Ben Wallace, the Secretary of State. 25 countries attended, um, many of whom, as a consequence of that, committed to uh, either humanitarian or lethal aid, um, which the UK will now work with allies to make sure is delivered. Um, whereas a few weeks ago, we were able to be quite open about the fact that we were delivering NLAW and uh, we were able to facilitate media coverage of its arrival. As you will appreciate, Mark, the situation is now somewhat different. And so the detail of what we're giving and when is probably something that we need to keep to ourselves. Um, but Ukrainian calls have been heard. We've seen, as you will have seen, uh, how much the Ukrainian armed forces have valued using the NLAW uh, anti-tank weapon that we provide last time round, and there's anecdotal evidence that that has been very successful in battle. Um, so we know what the Ukrainians want. Uh, we're doing our best to get it to them, but I'm afraid it's probably not detail that we can share in, in, with any sort of candor, I'm afraid. I suffice to say, though, are you confident that you can get this equipment in? Yes. If the Russians do come in and topple uh, this government, a freely elected democratic government, what would the West do to reverse that? 
Well, I think that that is the, the sort of two parts of the challenge. Our previous conversation about is what do you do immediately to try to assist in the, uh, in the Ukrainian attempts to repel the Russian advance. Um, and as we've been very clear throughout, that isn't, uh, I think, about NATO troops playing an active role in the conflict, but is very much about looking at how we support uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. The wide, the, the, the longer term competition with Russia. Sorry, and, sorry and, to interrupt. Sorry to inter sorry to in interrupt. I, I, this is not. a situation in which, you know, Russia is controlling this country. So, if you're still going to support the Ukrainian armed forces, are you saying that you would support and recognise a government in exile, and you would support and arm a resistance movement wherever that was? being located and based? Well, that is a decision for the National Security Council to take, but it is something that the Prime Minister has asked us in the Ministry of Defence to look at and plan for so that the National Security Council has that choice to make if and when that time comes. But I was going to go on to, to reflect that actually Putin has a further aim beyond territorial gain in Ukraine, which is around fracturing the NATO alliance and pushing NATO away from Russia's borders. There's obviously things that the Secretary General has announced over the last 24 hours to make sure that Putin gets the opposite to what he wants. But then there is a 10, 20-year project, I think, uh, where the West will be back into quite acute competition with Russia, where imposing cost on Putin, the kleptocrats that surround him, so that he fails and he is seen to fail and he has no opportunity to anoint his successor and Russia fundamentally changes as a country as a consequence because the Russian people just have had enough of him. That is something where I think the UK and our allies have got time to make good strategic decisions rather than necessarily needing to kind of rush. So there's the urgency of supporting the Ukrainians in what they're doing right now. And then there's making good strategic decisions around how we make sure that Putin really does fail as a consequence of the hubris he's shown over the last okay. week or two. But just OK, but just finally, it is highly likely, it sounds or is what you're saying, that you would recognise a government in exile and help arm a resistance uh, military, a, a resistance army? No, you're, you're, you're putting words in my mouth, Mark, and I need to be very clear. As a Ministry of well, Defence well, minister... You said it would be, I am, be a decision for the secure, national security. E exactly, uh, exactly. So as a Ministry of Defence minister, I am telling you that the Prime Minister has asked to be able to have that choice at his disposal, and that is work that the Ministry of Defence is... Uh, undertaking to look at how we would do that. But it is definitely not for me to give you any level of probability. That is a decision, rightly, that sits with the Prime Minister and the National Security Council.